Hello everyone, this is our second video in the HSTDB series. If you've not watched our first one on what happened during the first successful HSTDB test last year, go watch that one first. The link is up there and in the description below too. In this one, we're going to take a look at the aerodynamics aspects of the HSTDB. A hypersonic body is generally considered to be one flying at Mach 5 or greater speed. Scramjet engines, which make hypersonic speeds achievable, involve many technological challenges. These include thermal load management, additional of fuel to the high-speed stream, mixing of this fuel, ignition, flame holding, interaction between the intake and the combustor, and related intake unstart issues. So why is the intake key? The intake is one of the crucial subsystems in the scramjet engine. A number of studies on intakes have been done in the last few decades and they've shown that a flat bottomed forebody with the length to width ratio of around six and a half guarantee a uniform flow at the entrance for an angle of attack up to 10 degrees. Flow field data for a complete scramjet engine is lacking in literature for obvious reasons. The pressure data at wall surfaces of the engine could be experimentally obtained through piezoelectric transducers. However, Figuring out the detailed flow structures such as boundary layers, separation, vortices, shear layers, etc. through experiments is extremely difficult. DRDO's analysis program of hypersonic air breathing propulsion system therefore conducted three-dimensional numerical simulation of conceptual scramjet engines. The performance of the intake is a critical aspect of an air breathing scramjet engine. It needs to capture and efficiently compress air for efficient engine operation. It should provide adequate mass flow of air as demanded by the combustor and it should compress the flow as efficiently as possible, minimizing viscous and shock losses. Its contribution to the overall drag of the vehicle itself should be minimal and be able to take back pressure created by heat addition in the combustion chamber. And last but not the least, the velocity profile at the intake exit, that is the entry of the combustor, should be as uniform as possible. Overall vehicle performance depends greatly on the energy level and flow quality of the incoming air. Even a small loss in intake efficiency can cause a substantial engine thrust penalty. Before we get to talking about how the intake works, shock waves and boundary layers and shock shock, shock boundary layer interactions, let's first take a look at some basics. When an object moves through a fluid or a fluid flows around an object, the fluid is slowed down by the surface of the object. As you move further and further away from the object's surface, Speed of the fluid is less and less affected by the body itself. The velocity of the fluid therefore ranges from its actual velocity at a distance from the object surface to zero at the object surface. This very thin layer of slow speed fluid right next to the object's surface is called a boundary layer. This boundary layer may either be laminar or turbulent depending on the Reynolds number of the object. Why is the boundary layer important? It acts as an expanded shape of the object itself and external fluid flow reacts to the edge of the boundary layer as if it is the physical surface of an object. But the boundary layer itself is pressure dependent and can change shape causing it to separate from the body such as when wings stall at high angles of attack. And this boundary layer is why you see boundary layer splitters on fighter jets and DSI features in their intakes to feed their engines nice laminar airflow. When an object moves faster than the speed of sound and there is an abrupt decrease in the flow area, shock waves are generated. Across a shock wave, the static pressure, temperature and gas density increases almost instantaneously and a shock wave inclined to the flow direction is called an oblique shock wave. Another aspect to remember is the relation between velocity and the Mach angle of a shock wave. As the velocity of the object increases, the angle reduces. Let's take a look at what happens at hypersonic speeds. This is the flow pattern in a mixed compression intake. Performance of a ramjet scramjet vehicle is determined by its enlist efficiency as the engine depends on uniformity and total pressure of the flow. Hypersonic intakes are designed as mixed compression intakes, which is a combination of internal and external compression. In a scramjet engine, the flow is still supersonic at the end of the inlet section when it enters the combustion chamber. Since these engines do not have any moving parts like the compressor of a gas turbine engine, the air that enters the engine has to be compressed by the inlet. Therefore, it is vital that this compression process be as efficient as possible. The dominant feature in hypersonic inlet flows is the interaction of the oblique shocks induced by the inlet ramps 
with boundary layer developing on the inlet walls themselves this interaction causes flow separation leading to complex oscillatory flow structure and the unstart of the intake resulting in pressure recovery losses and reduction of the inlet efficiency an unstart of the intake can occur due to several other reasons like over contraction variation of flight conditions perturbations in combustor operation back pressure angle of attack etc or even a combination of these factors having a variable geometry inlet will allow the intake to function over a wide range of mach numbers bleed bypass can also be used to do the same thing however mechanical control systems have their own structural and cooling challenges predicting intake unstarts and mitigating them to reduce their occurrence or their effects is vital for hypersonic intake design by proper geometry selection the size of the separation bubble at the ramp surface could be minimized eliminating the need to have a mechanism to bleed the boundary layer to achieve greater performance four bodies of hypersonic vehicles have a ramp like structure designed to compress the incoming air with oblique shock waves for optimum mass flow through the inlet it is desirable that these shocks converge on the inlet cowl leading edge where these interact with the bow shock produced by the cowl lip viscous hypersonic shock on shock interactions can significantly affect the performance of the inlet through the creation of anomalous pressure and heat transfer peaks on the cowl leading edge in a vehicle like the HSTDV three shock waves interact on the cowl lip bow shock wave originating at the vehicle leading edge the bow shock wave created by the cowl lip and an oblique shock wave produced by the compressive turning of the flow by the inlet ramp the shock from the cowl tip induces separation of the boundary layer on the ramp wall leading to a separation bubble at the beginning of the separation region the flow is redirected due to the shape of the bubble and similar to the flow over a ramp a shock is induced the separation bubble is thickest at the point of impingement of the cowl shock further downstream at the reattachment point flow redirection induces a so called reattachment shock to avoid the need to include a bleed system here studies are done to design inlet geometry to influence shock shock and shock boundary layer interaction we can see oblique shocks originating at compression corners and the expansion fan these oblique shocks coalesce with the other oblique shock and form a stronger one ahead of the leading face of the lip reflected shocks and expansion waves path lines inside the intake show the oblique shock wave from the cowl lip undulations in the path line inside the intake are the result of reflected shock expansion waves due to the finite radius of curvature of the nose of the fore body a detached bow shock is generated ahead of the intake this is followed by oblique shocks originating from the compression ramps on the fore body itself at design angle of attack these shock waves intersect just at the leading edge of the engine bottom wall and the inlet operates in critical mode for lower angles of attack the bow shock opens up and the point of intersection of the shock waves is ahead of the leading edge and so there is spillage around the engine resulting in lower values of mass flow rate indicating a subcritical operation for greater angles of attack bow shock can be seen to bend towards the fore body and the point of intersection of the shock moves slightly inside the engine intake the spillage is also lower and hence mass capture is higher the intake operates in supercritical mode for these angles as the angle of attack increases the strength of the bow shock increases and oblique shocks from the ramps as well as reflected shocks inside the engine show steeper gradients this decreases the mach number at the inlet and reduction in mach number is greater for higher angles of attack this shows that there is an optimum operating point at which increased loss of stagnation pressure is offset by reduced loss of stagnation pressure across the oblique shock waves due to the reduced mach number a lot of experimental studies have shown that bleed can reduce boundary layer separation and improve inlet total pressure recovery such as in the high shot 2 program now all these are ideal conditions where everything behaves exactly as they should but real life is a lot more complex for hypersonic air breathing vehicles mass capture ratio is an important parameter as the amount of air that flows through the projected frontal area without entering the engines does not do any work and incurs a drag penalty that must be overcome by the propulsion system itself now the amount of air from the free stream that does not actually enter the engine itself is called spillage the intakes are designed in such a way that the first oblique shock impinges on the lip of entrance of the vehicle internal flow path at mark numbers below design mark number the shock on lip condition is not met and there is an occurrence of spillage as we've just seen earlier for axisymmetric intakes like in the brahmos it is possible to have a design mark number with zero spillage 
can be observed that size spillage for non axisymmetric intakes like in an aeroplane type vehicle as the hstdv is this is significant the introduction of side walls does reduce size spillage but it still remains considerable the hstdv scramjet cruise vehicle has two ramps which give rise to the formation of two external oblique shocks converging at the cowl lip the third oblique shock occurs from the lip and impinges at the end of the second ramp making the flow parallel to the engine flow path the flow is further compressed internally by a converging section which is followed by a constant area isolator the oblique shocks from the nose and the second ramp do not intersect exactly at cowl lip due to presence of a boundary layer this boundary layer effect can be seen in the start of the second oblique shock also which does not exactly start at the turning point between the first and second ramps the third oblique shock starts from the cowl lip and reaches the end of the second ramp the positions of the shocks can be clearly observed to be away from the geometric turnings due to viscous effects a side fence is provided from the nose of the intake to the angel cowl lip this physically prevents the air flow from spilling to the sides but some of it does spill combustor entry mark number is one of the most important parameters for a scramjet engine intake fences increase mass capture ratio and combustor entry static pressure and temperature while decreasing mark number total pressure and velocity therefore intake geometry design has to be a careful decision made considering these opposing factors another important aspect is the reduction in side spillage with increase in span of the intake itself during design optimization intakes with lower height and larger span may be designed for a higher mass capture ratio now the hstdv itself was designed for a mark number of 6 with an angle of attack at 5 degrees the internal compression intake has a contraction ratio that is the ratio of intake exit area to entry area of 0.35 and the vehicle has a provision to vary entry area of the internal compression section through a flap the length of the intake is about 1.3 times the width and the length of the combustor is about 2.4 times the width the combustor has an isolator to reduce the non uniformity of the intake flow followed by divergent sections there is a thin wall starting from combustor entry to exit splitting it into two halves with four fuel injection struts each the middle wall is also used for improving the structural integrity of the engine a single expansion ramp nozzle with upward divergence angle with the nozzle cowl with downward deflection is aft of it which provides stability and control now let's see how this works the fore body provides the initial external compression and contributes to drag as well as moment of the vehicle the intake provides the final compression of high speed air to provide ideal inflow conditions for the scramjet engine itself A series of oblique shocks are generated from the vehicle body under surface and cowl surface as the flow proceeds through the intake to the combustor. The internal flow structures are highly three-dimensional and strut generated shocks are clearly visible from increased pressure and temperature in the flow path. As we can see, it was observed that the oblique shock from the cowl leading edge is much stronger than the four body shocks the cowl shock interacts with the expansion waves originating from the body side wall near the separated flow region this creates complicated shock reflections inside the internal compression region also variation of shock structures in two lateral planes is evident that the flow is highly complex and three dimensional inside the engine during studies it was found that the net drag from the four pairs of injection struts was nearly 2/3 of the entire cruise vehicle's net drag force large subsonic flow regions occur adjacent to the side wall and behind the struts which is due to combustion of the fuel various shock interactions from combustor walls and struts and combustion of the fuel with incoming air is reducing the mark number in the struck wake region significantly both pressure and temperature increase in these regions due to combustion of fuel and heat release the pressure rise in the combustor due to reaction does not affect the flow upstream well that was a quick look at the hstdv intakes and the aerodynamics aspects of the intake itself in the next video we'll take a look at the combustion chamber of the scramjet engine itself and see how the magic works please like this video and share it with your friends on various social media please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to stay updated on indian defense programs and technology